participatory tools for data collection. What do you mean by participatory? Here, the main thing is that the villagers, they should actively participate in the entire process from beginning to end. And in case of participatory tools, these are basically applied for data collection when some programs will introduce. In relation to the program, we need data and for that purpose, we utilize these participatory tools. And since it is related with some project or program, because of that, the farmer's participation in every stages is very important. From providing data, analysis of data, the implementation of the findings, evaluation of the project and risk in every step. And that is why it is participatory. It is not that only farmers will come and sit there. That is not participatory. They will actively act as a member of the team. Then only it is called as participatory. There are different PRA tools, participatory real appraisal. These PRA tools are more than 100 numbers. And for different purposes, the tools are used for different ways. And all the tools are not similar. Some tools only give some specific data only. Because of that, there are numbers of PRA tools. After the presentation, you will be able to name six tools of PRA, explain at least procedures of three PRA tools, describe types of data collected by common PRA tools. In these three points, I will restrict my presentation. There are several PRA data collection tools. Only a few will be discussed in this session. This will be used to build village relationships and collect data. Mainly village level data or collection of village level data, we use some common methods which are very popular and that will also help to build a relationship with the client. And that type of some techniques I will discuss here. Some commonly used tools are mapping. Under mapping, there are social mapping, resource mapping, wealth ranking, agroecological mapping, like that. There are different types of mapping. And some another a matrix ranking, seasonal calendar, semi-structured interview, flow diagram, hand diagram, timeline, transject work. These are some common methods of PRA generally we are using at project implementation stage or rural development program. Nowadays, all the rural development programs of the government, collection of data through PRA is compulsory because when it is done through PRA, people's participation are also expected and they are clear about the program also. What is social map? In case of social map, it is most common use, village mapping, social mapping, or uh, wealth mapping, or sometimes we can plan all the map together. Social mapping is perhaps the most popular method in PR. The focus here is on the depiction of habitation patterns and the nature of housing and social infrastructures like roads, drainage systems, schools, drinking water facilities, like that. From that, you can understand that for social map, there are some specific data. You can obtain some specific data like nature of housing and social infrastructure, roads, drainage system, like that. We will not get all type of information. It depicts that the local people believe to be relevant and important for that. Because the villagers, they know more than us about the village. So when they will involve in the data collection stage, data providing stage, and if they will involve, then it will help us to get uh, proper information. Remember one thing that in case of your PIA tools, all data are qualitative in nature, not quantitative, but it is sufficient to substantiate the quantitative data. And village mapping, village to village, it will be different. And But uh, what kind of points are coming out from those mapping that will be very helpful for us as a development worker. It reflects their perceptions of the social dimensions with the reality with the high degree of authenticity. Since they are providing the information based on their perception and because of that those informations are highly authenticated. When the entire villagers or most of the villagers will verify the information, so one information will come but that information is verified by all. So these type of data are more authentic in nature. Application of social map, where we can apply social map. 
SSL Maps main benefit is that it helps develop a broad understanding of social media, including social stratification, demographics, settlement patterns, and social infrastructure. When we enter into a village, it is difficult for us to know the social stratification quickly or the demographic pattern, settlement pattern, social infrastructure available in the village. And when we draw a village map, or social map with the help of the villagers, then they can identify all these things. And based on the information, we can identify the stratification, settlement pattern, or demographic pattern, all these type of things. Social maps are also used for developing comprehensive understanding of village life, collecting demographic and other household data, providing a discussion from on various aspects of social life, monitoring and evaluating tools. Initially, we will prepare a social map and finally when the problem is over, then again we will draw a social map and based on the variation, we can tell about the performance of the particular project. And here another point is that only the drawing is not sufficient. During the drawing, what they discuss, this is also equally important for us. And because of that, some of the external personnel should serve the purpose as to record the discussion because in the map they will depict the picture. Whatever they discuss during the brain of the social map or preparation of the social map, all points should be recorded. And these statements are very important and reliable for the development workers. And that is also part of mapping. It is not that only drawing of the map is the mapping, but what they discuss, who discuss, how they are discussed, all these things that should be recorded. Then only we can mention that it should be a complete social map. And in case of analysis also, we are judging to statement also, included the information received from those information. How to conduct mapping, fix the location and time for the exercise in consultation with the local people. Invite them for it. Explain the purpose of the exercise to participate. Ask them to start with drawing the prominent physical feature of their community. Leave it to them to use whatever materials they choose, local and other materials. What's the process alertly? Listen to the discussion carefully. Initially, when we ask them to draw a map of their village, they may hesitate because they have the practice of this type of things. But interesting point is that even an illiterate person can draw their village map once we figured them to do these things. And generally, we started the things like that. We draw the just boundary of the village or if there is a, some mistake, they will correct it or we will start with the entrance of the main point, main road and then the spot where we are present at that moment, then some other prominent social structure like school, college, etc. We will place, draw them, then they will mention that here there will be a temple, here there will be a house, there is a road and when they will mention the things. They will tell the writer to do these things and slowly and slowly during this period the development order he should hand the word of hand to the villagers. And ultimately, automatically the villagers they will be involved in the entire process. Only thing is that we have to record the discussion part. And if there is some clarification, you can ask these things and you should mention all these things in your report. Already this point I mentioned that take detailed notes, no more than facilitator role. That means we will not draw, we will only facilitate to draw. Keep track of who is actively involved, who is absent and why. Take proactive steps to input those left out. After the mapping, mapping helps people to locate their homes on the map. Finally, clarify any ambiguities, share the map with the community. After completion of the map, we should share the map with the community because the map is drawn by four, five, six people. And when we will expose the map in the community and then what happens, the community members they will say whether it is right or wrong. And from that, we can go for some modification also if we found that the information is not correct. And what is given in the community level, that is perfect. And because of that, this mapping should be evaluated at community level. Actually, man to man, the terminology also varies in case of PRA because it is very flexible in the sense. But whatever the terminology, it should be clear to us all. That is the main thing. And in all the mapping, all these things, PRA, one point is that PRA is not drawn by any external personnel, it is prepared by the villagers.
they discuss them self and prepare the villagers and only in one method i will discuss later when the extension personnel involved in record taking not the villagers resource mapping is also just like your social mapping or village mapping here also along with social map resource map is popular pr method the resource map depicts land hills rivers fields vegetation like that find the social map depicts habitation community facilities roads temples etc all the resources where is the river where is the pond where is the crop field where is the hills what type of crop all these type of things are mentioned in the same map or in some different map and along with the social map if we done these things then we draw all the home infrastructure in the villages and then the your cropping pattern cropping style or cultivable areas all these things along with the social map social infrastructure for example this is the house and this is the agricultural land that this is the river this is a pond and all these things these are under resource mapping and this house these are under social map you can club those these two and you can separately prepare these things a resource map may be include habitation that means all the houses you can show in the resource map the line between resource and social maps can sometimes be blurred since home or habitations are also depicted in resource mapping so social mapping and resource mapping is almost similar and we can't make any differentiation between them actually what happens if you prepare a village mapping there you can go for social map plus resource map everything so in that situation from a village map you will get both social and resource part and because of that since these are in the same paper so which one brings therefore the differences is very unclear keep in mind that it reflects the people's perception rather than precise measurement to scale always suppose this area we may say it is four bigger no need to measure these things that it is four bigger based on their perception it is four bigger this is suppose three bigger and the perception is important if so remember I mentioned yes it is uh, 4 bigger okay 4 bigger if it is 4 bigger and if it is 3 bigger the area under this was less than this and because of that in next area they will reduce the area size depending upon the 4 bigger if 8 bigger they, they will double the area these are all based on their perception not based on accurate measure and based on your perception whatever we found these are based on people's consensus and as a result that information is sufficient for us to take a decision application of resource map we can collect information based on your resource map that is on to collect data on topography terrain and slopes forest vegetation and tree species soil type fertility erosion and depth land and land use command area tenure boundaries and ownership water water bodies irrigation sources rivers and drainages water set development various soil and water conservation measures agricultural developments of cropping pattern productivity like that these are some area where we can collect data through resource map it is not that uh, in every cases we can use resource map but to get this type of information we can use resource map so before selection of the pra tool it is important to know the type of data what type of data you should require and based on that against the data which are the methods available and who it is and who is it compatible to your situation you should use that only it is not that we will go with village mapping and collect all these things because every pra tools they have the limitation in data collection they can collect a limited part of data not all so that site should be clear then wealth ranking in case of wealth ranking it is a one type of matrix and here the who are rich who are poor that can be analyzed in terms of matrix in wealth ranking is a pra method of determining a village economic attributes it shows the relative wealth and well being of households in a village and helps classify it aids in the mining and the social economic 
Tapas. The data generated by the 12th ranking exercise helps identify the villages or household. Villagers rank themselves. It provides a baseline for identifying indicators for village development program, implementation program, monitoring and evaluation. When we will go for Wealth ranking that wealth will measure in terms of villagers' perception. Rich poor, who are rich, who are poor. That is determined by them, the villagers. According to them, he is poor. According to them, he is rich. So, in this way, they provide the information that based on crop land, how many numbers of persons are richer, how many percentages are poorer. Kitchen garden land, based on that, rich and poor, like that. Three wood, based on three wood. They will deserve our poor. Three leaves, medicinal plants, like that. These are some dimensions based on which the villagers differentiate the, your wealth ranking of uh, villagers because there is no clear cut definition of research and poor person. And uh, the village people, how they term villagers are poor, we should accept that thing because it can be done at later part also. In case of transit work, it is somewhat uh, tough and uh, but at the same time it is very important method for PR technique. A transit work is a mobile version in which the research team works from the center of the village to the outer limit of the territory accompanied by several local instruments who are especially knowledgeable about national resource issues. Here what a time the villagers uh, they accompanied with the development authors or sense as a to describe the things about their field. Generally, they will start from a point, suppose that is the highest point of the river, and from river to your lowland area, then island area, or suppose other ways from entry point of the village to exit point, last point, then they will start. Here, they will start from highest point to lowest point highest to lowest and when they visited first they will visit like that they observe that in this area there is a forest forest then they will ask what type of creature they are what type of culture they are all these type of things what is the land type and those things are here next pattern is outer field then inner field, then the central village where habitations are there. And in a big stages, what is the land situation, what is the crop situation, all the things are spotted and based on that they are recorded. Here the recording is done by the investigator, not by the villagers. This is the only method where researchers note down the information based on the comment given by the Farmers. Here, farmers, they are actively engaged in providing the information, answering the questions of the investigator, but they will not draw the picture. But uh, they only provide the information to them, and investigator will do the things. So here, investigator is the recorder, not the villager. Another important thing is the Venn diagram or subparty diagram. Here, what happened shows institutions, organizations, group, and important individuals found in the village and their villagers' view of their importance in the community. It also includes how close the contact and cooperation between those organizations and group. Here, what happened? Initially, they will prepare some different size of circle and those are just like your sapati. So it is called a sapati and they mention about the organization with the relationship and importance. Based on your importance or relationship, which is the closest to the village. These are at the center, highest sapati. And since these are at the village or in close proximity of the village, it is of places overlooking the village. Then this indicates that there is a relationship, good relationship, summer, and uh, the importance is more. They have the importance and also the relationship. Here also importance is more and relationship is also good. And in some cases for this, in large size but more distant. That means relationship is good but your interaction that is less. And based on that you can identify all the institutions, organizations who are involved in developing activities of the village. And based on that we can identify which are the institutes uh, really doing some work with which the villagers has a good relationship and villagers also know their importance. There are some important organizations but they are not in close proximity of the village.
then it will be placed at let us call. And in this way, we can identify that these are the organizations with whom we can start the program or these are the organizations with whom we should make some discussion so that they will be more active in developing program of the particular village. A Venn diagram or Sapati diagram is a community social structure. An easy way to draw a Venn diagram is on a whiteboard. It is useful to have colored paper cut into different shapes to represent the various organizations and individuals in the community. Add them to the diagram. If no colored paper is available, the marker can be used to draw the groups and individuals. One on the ground, uh, use stone or having size to represent various groups. That is optional because nowadays people can do these things by themselves. So if there is or is different then also go with this type of procedure. Otherwise they can draw these things and index will be given and who draw the map or Venn diagram. That should be mentioned. In every cases, village meeting, well ranking, in all the cases we should write the name of the writer because we did not produce the thing. It is a production of a group. So due acknowledgement should be given to those. Till then goodbye. Thank you very much.